beautiful. How are you all today? Well, this is a bit of a change, isn't it? I'm not in the shed, I'm not in the kitchen. I'm on the train. I'm doing one of my little, um, regular little jaunts down to my great aunt's place. Got a few things to sort out with her today. But I thought, whoops, sorry. I thought I'd bring you along for the ride with me because you know I love trains anyway but there are some beautiful sights out of the window on the way which hopefully I'll be able to capture if we're not traveling too fast and then when I get down to hers she lives by the sea and it's so lovely so I thought we could all go and have a paddle together Yay! so she lives on the um, coast of Kent and now some of you well obviously some of you live in Kent a lot of you in the UK would have probably visited Kent at times but for those of you who don't know Kent it is called the Garden of England because of all the wonderful um, fruit orchards mostly apples so as we go along I will try to get a shot <laughs> we're just whizzing at the moment getting out of London um, I'll try and show you some shots of the apple orchards which of course in the spring are beautiful because of all the blossoms um, lots of cherry trees near where she lives again absolutely gorgeous <laughs> absolutely gorgeous in the springtime before we even get anywhere near where she is we're going to go through Rochester and Chatham which were some of you know, may know Rochester because of Dickens and because of the ship building there years and years and years ago I'm talking wooden ships anyway as we get there I will try to show you so sit back Enjoy the speeding scenery. Oh, oh, it's really speedy at the moment, isn't it? Um, yeah. Once we're out of London, ooh, I'll turn you back on. But for now, I'm going to have a little read, maybe a little snooze, and then as we get into Kent, I'll show you how lovely it is. <laughs> well, I didn't manage to film anything on the train because after I turn the camera off at the next stop about five million bajillion children got onto the train all mega mega excited because they're off for a day at the seaside of course they're excited and that's perfectly okay with me so I will maybe try to get some pictures on the way back when hopefully the train might be a bit quieter because all the kids will be asleep after their sugar rush I do love getting off the train here. I always feel like I've slightly stepped back in time. This <laughs> is the main road for my great auntie's little town, village, whatever you want to call it. And so typical, these, these um, this sort of covered walkway couldn't be more Victorian if it tried. And I'm just going to show you, oh, let's cross the road. I want to show you into a couple of the shops. So, this one's a bit of a gift shop. Everything's closed because it's Sunday, but of course, look, we're in a seaside town. So it's the obligatory seaside paraphernalia. Although I don't remember the last time I saw any donkeys on the beach here. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay, let's just go and have a little amble down the high street more gifty things more gifty things oh look more seasidey stuff so just in case the beach hut needs any more theming out i want to show you oh no it's shut down here of course it's shut it's sunday look isn't it nice this little cupboard because it just keeps the sun off us. Oh, this, it's closed. 
this is one of my favourite little shops. It's got a little bit of everything, but in the summer, oh, you can't see it at all. In the summer, it's always chock full of oh, buckets and spades and rubber dinghies and flip flops and everything you might need for the beach. Can we just see through the window there? Look. Where's the buckets and spades? Oh, you probably can't see a thing, can you? But there's the buckets and spades. Oh, well, that's Sunday for you, isn't it? In a little sleepy town, they do still close their shops on a Sunday. Right, I'm going to take you around the corner because I would like to show you some of the gorgeous architecture around here, which is so, so typical of a Victorian seaside town. I absolutely love this little square. This is so typical of Victorian seaside. We, you see on the first floor the little balcony, the covered balcony. And in an ideal world, they'd get a sea view. But on this square, they don't. Um, <laughs> if they did, it would pretty much double the price. But yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And then just swinging around, this is the posh side. Look at their balconies. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, what I'd give. What I'd give for one of these with a sea view and a stair lift so I didn't have to use the stairs. Four balconies. Isn't that a pretty one? Oh, variations on a the theme. And actually, let me just come around this van. This one, you can see this is a new build. But how nice they sort of replicated that um, that Victorian architecture. Gorgeous. I'm speaking in hushed tones. I feel a bit <laughs> like a snooper. It's just because it's Sunday and it's so quiet. There's like no one around. Um, so yeah, anyway. <sighs> Enough architecture for now. Oh, another balcony. Enough architecture. I need to skedaddle and get off to my great aunt and get her sorted. I might try and um, show you a clip in her garden. <sighs> mm, gorgeous sea air, I can smell it from here. The sea is just, just beyond that tree there. Yay! Right, work to do. Oh, here I am in my great aunt's garden. There's quite a bit of work to do. Gosh, there's a lot of work to do. I've neglected it rather, but there's masses and masses of fruit coming on the trees. And actually, because we can't get her outside today, I can, in a minute, go indoors and show her this. So if, if she can't come to the garden, <laughs> the garden, can come to her this isn't ideal is it i'm shooting right into the sun but gosh it's masses and masses of fruit up there wow can't quite get to the end of the garden at the moment i really need to do a lot of work but there's some damsons at the end of the garden and then all these apple trees were planted to basically give apples coming at intervals um and then this one will be the last one to give. Oh, there's a little cat scampering away. But yep, again, masses and masses of fruit, but that's all about 15 foot <laughs> up in the air. Not quite sure how I'm gonna get those down. <clears throat> in the past, I've kind of shaken the tree uh, to get at them. But yeah, tons and tons and tons of fruit to come wonderful I think we're going to be making some cider come the autumn that'll be lovely oh happy happy sight right let me pop back indoors and show this to her ah, I've managed to miss my train by about two minutes and the next one's not for an hour so I thought I'd bring you all down to the beach and today the tide is very, very high. <laughs> Never normally see it this high. But also what I want to show you are, look at the lovely beach huts. I'm going to go behind just because everyone's outside of their beach huts today and I respect their privacy. 
but as we come up the slope I can point into the distance and uh, you'll see the serried ranks of them. Can you see right over there? Oh, I love it. Love, love, love. I love the English seaside. Now the thing with beach huts is some councils don't allow too many colours. Others allow whatever colours you want. And the ones in the far distance, I think they're actually council owned ones, which you can rent for either a day or a weekend or a week. And then generally the really bright colourful ones, let's just come back out and see if I can come around this way and show you. The really bright colourful ones are the privately owned ones. Um, and would you believe it, in some parts of the country, privately owned beach huts change hands money-wise for thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. I mean, you literally, you're not going to get change from 30 grand from some beach huts. The sea is so gentle today. I've got a wetsuit and a bathing suit at my great aunt's place. I should have, um, well, I didn't know I was going to miss my train if I'd have known. I'd have brought them down with me and then I could have had a dip. What I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can come down these steps and just swing the camera around briefly so you can see all the lovely beach huts that are the private ones. And um, when you look at them, you might think, hmm. And now you can see how Vivi's shed was influenced. Hang on a sec. Just so many people around today, of course, because it's Sunday. Okay, let's negotiate steps. Just watching where I'm going. The smell is so beautiful. That little little whiff of ozone. Let's just see. You see how oh lovely colours. Oh sorry that was so fast. I'm just trying to, as I said, respect people's privacy while I'm at it. But yeah, you can definitely see what has influenced my shed, can't you? Yay! Oh so many folk in the sea today. It's so cute. It's probably mostly kids. <laughs> The grown-ups are too sensible to get in. It's kind of hazy as well, suddenly. Oh, oh, I do love to be beside the seaside. What better? Right, well, I think as I've got nearly an hour to kill, I'm going to go to one of the little cafes on the front here, sit down, give myself a cup of tea, and get myself ready to catch the next train. Have a look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? So, I've just come upon the owner of this beach hut sitting outside and I asked her permission if I could do a quick film inside because it's so beautiful, look at that. And you know what? If you're not near the beach, never mind. Turn your shed into a beach hut. Isn't that gorgeous? Everything you need for the day, you pop some pans, somewhere to stash your chairs. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful colour. I'm going to have to paint the inside of my shed blue now, I think. Thank you so much for letting us have a little look. She didn't want to be on camera. That's absolutely fine. But thank you so much for letting us have a look. Oh, sigh. I need to live by the sea. What a gorgeous way to end a day. <laughs> you know, in the last three years, so many of my visits here have been <laughs> really, really loaded with stress. Kind of all started three years ago when she had a fall because she had virtually hoarded herself out of her own home. Weeks and weeks and weeks of clearing and sorting the house and putting a new kitchen in, new bathroom, da -da, and we got her home and she stayed home. And that's all she's ever wanted is to be at home in her own home so yeah it's been difficult I went from visiting maybe two or three times a year to visiting two or three times a week but I don't begrudge a second of it to see her today oh my goodness and after I've been in the garden and filmed that bit of footage I did go inside to show it to her she loved it her little face lit up so absolutely brilliant 
And to top it all off, <laughs> you can see from the way I'm squinting how bright it is, to get a few minutes down here on the seafront, it's a gorgeous sea breeze coming in. Can't complain, can you? Oh, absolute bliss. And it's funny, the number of times I've, I've had to come down here and it's been my only day off that week and I've had to spend it here and there's a certain part of me that thinks, oh, I could really do with not doing that six hour round trip and da 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 da. But then, literally the minute I go through the door and see her face and see how happy she is to see me, that makes me feel better. And then I do generally try to quickly before my train just whiz to the beach and breathe in, even in winter. And it just makes everything we really feel right again. What is it about the seaside? It's magical, isn't it? All the little squeals you can hear. A few waves are coming. I just, you know, the kids are bouncing and being bashed around in the water. Perfect. So, I'd better wait, make my way to the train station. I'd kind of like to just sit here now for a couple of hours, but no, I need to get home. So, off I toddle. Gosh, <laughs> the train coming home was even noisier, if that's possible, than the train going down there. So, I'm really sorry, but no bits of footage of the gorgeous Kent countryside. Actually, it does rattle past too fast anyway, I think. What I should do is do another trip, but just get out at each station and show you the things I want to show you. Anyway, so, sorry about that, but um, here I am, nearly back in London. I've just changed trains, but I'm about to change trains. Well, I've got off a train. <laughs> I get the train up from Kent and I'm almost into London and then I have to change and it's so annoying because my next train will only take 15 minutes but I have to wait 20, 25 minutes for it, never mind. And it's always an odd thing this little trip back. My heart's a little bit heavy, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I kind of, I get on the train down there and I'm happy to be going home because I'm a real home, I'm a home bird, a home body, I like to be at home. But I also feel this huge pang, toot toot, bye bye to that train, um, yeah, I, I, I always feel a huge pang of, um, I don't know whether it's something between sadness or regret or something. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I always have a heavy heart when I leave her and leave Kent. Yeah. I don't know quite why, but um, maybe it's because she's so old. I'm never quite sure, you know, when will be the next time I see her, how she's gonna cope. But I will say this, <laughs> I actually don't worry about her too much when I'm not there because she is so stubborn, so cantankerous, so belligerent, so independent, so feistily independent and intelligent. She can do perfectly well without me. Hmm. I wonder where I get it from. <laughs> She's an absolute marvel. And at 98, I have huge respect for her. I love her to bits. It's a privilege every time I get to spend some time with her. I try to learn from her. <laughs> I say try because sometimes she tries to hammer it into me or bludgeon it into me. But um, yeah, so I'm properly on my way home now with a slightly heavy heart because the minute I leave her I miss her for all her annoyingness and her faults and her oh my goodness she corrects me every two minutes she always has to know better than me 
Um, she is an absolute marvel. That's really noisy. I don't know if there are any train spotters amongst you, but that's some kind of coal freight train it said on the side. Yeah, she's an absolute marvel. I love her to bits. It's been a great day. We've got a load of stuff sorted. I got a whiff of sea air. Brilliant. So I'm now going to wait for my next train when I finally get back to my um, hometown, as it were. The walk between the train station and my flat is about double the distance to my allotment. In other words, my allotment is halfway along the distance between the station and my home. So I shall pop into the allotment, give everything a jolly good watering, get myself home, eat something I haven't eaten today yet, um, and flop. I might even, when I get to the allotment, after I've watered, I might just flop in my little deck chair <laughs> for half an hour. Yay! The bottom line is this. Love your older rallies. They are amazing. I love and cherish her and every moment I spend with her is precious and I'm grateful for it and I'm privileged to have it. So, fantastic. Right. I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now. I hope I'll see you again really soon. Sorry I couldn't show you the Kent countryside but maybe one day, like I said, I'll take a train trip and I'll just hop on and hop off the train and show you things I'd like to show you. But in the meantime, happy looking after your own fruit trees and your own orchards. I will see you again soon. Until then, take care everyone. I'm really, really, really pooped. Is this my train? This isn't my train. I just want to get home now. See you soon. Take care. Bye. And uh, choo choo. <laughs> I love trains. <laughs>